today, it's time to talk about D5 Render. I've used most of the renderers out there and recently I've been really impressed by D5. Today we're going to take a look at the Rhino to D5 workflow before we run through a quick tutorial of how to go from this blank Rhino model into this awesome rendering using D5. Now the 3D model you see in this video is a personal project and I'll have the Rhino model and D5 files available for download in the comments below. D5 is a truly awesome rendering software. If you take a look through the D5 gallery, you can see what it's capable of. From super high detail city or landscape scale renderings, down to super finely crafted interiors and everything in between. The range of atmospheres, scene size and project range is truly incredible and I can't find anything that will limit what you can create in this program. So now we're just going to take a quick overview of the Rhino to D5 workflow, as I think it's really efficient and really worth pointing out how this can save you some time. D5 is a standalone rendering program which syncs models from all of the major modeling programs, but in this video we'll be focusing on Rhino. Now what this means is you can essentially work with two windows or programs open at once. On one side you can have your Rhino window and on the other side you can have your D5 rendering window. Now this type of workflow is really efficient because you can quickly make updates in your model and using the provided plugins quickly sync that change straight into your render program. And it's a really quick way of making little changes in both of your programs at once. This is my preferred type of workflow for rendering as it's super efficient and intuitive. If we break out the workflow into steps, the first step is to create your model in Rhino as you normally would. Make sure you use layers and groups to organize your components and assign materials to the objects in which you will later apply the same material to. There's no need to set up any material parameters, maps or settings as we'll only apply and modify the materials in D5. Just a quick note to say that you'll also be doing your UVW mapping partially in Rhino, however you can do a lot of it in D5 which is really good. Second step is to sync your model to your new D5 project using the D5 sync plugin. This is really easy to do and literally works with a click of a button. And the third and final step, opening up the D5 render program, create a new project, just going through your usual rendering workflow in the D5 render window. You might start with selecting and applying materials, setting the sun and environment parameters, adding light and all of your other entourage models. Then you might set up some scenes, create the cameras and then finally exporting your images. So now we're going to go through a quick tutorial for beginners to create an external render of a house design in D5. The most important step here is to make sure that your model is well organized by material. So as you can see in this model, all of the various model elements have been grouped into layers and sub layers based on the material that is going to be applied to them. So for example, under doors, we can see that the sub layers are front door. This might have its own particular material applied and then glass will need its own material. So that's all on a glass sub layer under doors. And if we click on one of these, we can see the material is simply a custom material with a custom name. There's no other attributes applied and the way to do this is to simply go to the materials and go create new material custom and simply just give that its own custom name and that's all you need to do. Now the next step is to simply open up the D5 render, create a new project and then as you can see there's no model in here but what you want to do is go back to Rhino, go to the D5 render sync menu, click the connect to D5 button, you can see that was a success and then simply click synchronize live updates to pass all of those updates into your render and you can see the model has been brought into D5. And the way that materials work in D5 is that all of the different materials and that have been applied to the various elements in Rhino render have been carried over to D5. So you can see that all of these materials here have been grouped based on their material applied in Rhino. And this is what will allow us to apply unique textures inside D5 to these objects. It's also worth saying that at this point, I would typically go ahead once I've imported the model and saved the D5 render, you can go ahead and do that. To make sure that no progress is lost. Okay, so now if we take a quick look at the D5 render user interface, you can see that it's broken up into a series of panels and windows. On the left, we have the scene list. These are where individual scenes are created, which are effectively a series of settings within D5 render that capture all the elements of a scene. And this can consist of camera angles, views, sun and sky, lighting, effects, materials, materials and object visibility settings and this helps upset a series of render scenes which we can quickly switch between to allow us to create multiple renders in different styles and various different settings within one D5 render file. And now that's really good and I recommend you get familiar with it. We've got the layer portion where all of the various entourage models or assets are applied and placed into and allow us to turn them on and off. You've got the object and model window here which is all of the various objects in the model. Over on the right we have the environment tab which is things like sun, sky, 
HDRI map and various weather controls. You then have the effects controls, which is post-processing features such as exposure, shadow, highlight, contrast, etc. At the top, we have the add lights, path tool, various tools for placing, environmental assets, add particles, and scatter buttons. Now, this little button up here, the assets window is your friend. This will open up the window that allows you to see all of the thousands of really good high quality textures that come with D5 render and they've all been grouped here. You can see also we have models as well, which are all of the various categories here on the left and they're broken down into further subcategories. There's also some various particle effects and objects and some scatter objects and effects. Then you can see also in the top right, we have the window display settings for setting between quick and precise viewer settings, uh, setting the view mode and then some other options for light sources, assets and various other things. We've got the camera settings and then finally the view mode so you've got your typical orbit which is mouse based controls then you've got your fly and your walk which is similar to other rendering or game based programs the next step is to start applying materials to all of the objects in the scene and I'll typically focus on all of the objects visible to the front of the house as this is going to be the render that we'll be focusing on. So to go through and start applying materials what I'll do is open out the asset window, make sure I've got it set to a material, I'll make it a little bit smaller so that I can see and then we'll start by applying a material to this wall section of the model here. So I know that what I want is some bricks so I'll just pop down into wall tiles, there's some bricks in here and go through and find a material that I'm happy with. With. and as you can see there's tons of options so once you click on a model or material sometimes we'll just have to quickly download from the cloud but as you can see that's really quick and what you can do is just apply that material to the object and so the UV mapping hasn't come through because we haven't set that in Rhino. So if we quickly jump back into Rhino, and what I'll do is go to the layer that that object is on, select all of the sublayer objects so that I can apply the mapping all at once. Go up on the top right hand side to properties, texture mapping, and I'll use box mapping as this make most sense. So I'll quickly drag out that shape, click yes for cap, and I'll change the settings 2000 millimeters per side. Then you just quickly hit the synchronized live updates and you can see that's come through. It's still a bit big, so what we'll do is we'll go back and reduce the size of that map to something like maybe a thousand to eight hundred sync it again come across and the changes have come through instantly and now you can see if you decided that you didn't like that material and wanted to swap it out you could quickly do that and it would maintain the uvw mapping which is great once all the materials have been set i like to start thinking about adding in the model assets or entourage such as vegetation, cars, furniture, pot plants, and general set dressing. So as you can see, if you open up the asset browser and go over to model, there's tons of things that you can start adding in. For example, I might start with adding some plants to these planters here. In this planter here on the left, I'd like to start adding some bamboo. So what I'll do is go ahead to model, go into nature, and then I'll quickly search for some bamboo. As you can see, there's all various options here. I might go down and select some that are about the size that I need. What I'll do is click on these to download them and add them into my library. You could click on one of these objects and then individually place them throughout this planter bed. You might mix them up to make sure that you don't have too much repetition, but otherwise that was how you do it. And then you have to go through and manually add all of the elements that you want. But there's a quicker way to do this. Go ahead to the top and click on the environmental path tool and then select the different bamboo models that you would like to include on that path and then draw your path here using the mouse. And what that will allow you to do is it'll automatically generate a series of models which you've selected from the palette on the left and apply them here. Once you're happy with the path itself, click done. Then you can go through and edit. You can add or remove models as you like. You can change the alignment. You can increase the number of elements. You can change their direction, change the random direction, random spacing and offset. You can also change the random size to give it some variability. These tools are really helpful for just getting a general sense naturalness in your images. And it's a really quick way of creating groups or parts of objects in a few clicks. Once you're happy with that, simply click away and that's been applied on the scene. Now for this planter here, you might decide that you want a kind of understory planting. So what you want to do then is have a look through the model library and what we're going to do here is we're going to use the brush tool. And this is similar to the path tool, except this is a brush which applies a selected set of models in various densities and sizes. So what I'm going to do is go through here and quickly select a few plant models that I'd like placed around this garden bed. And then what you can do is start painting this in with your brush. And if you place something that you don't want to do, simply click on the eraser tool and remove that. I didn't really want the bamboo 
bamboo there. So we'll go back to the brush, we'll remove the bamboo from the selection. We'll increase the radius of the brush and reduce the density. I want those to be slightly smaller and then we'll go through and paint them in here. Now this is another quick way of adding randomized and scattered plantings into your models and there's another great tool that D5 has to help you quickly populate up a model and make it look realistic. Now I'm going to go through and individually place all the environmental assets in one go and then we'll come back and see what's happened. Now we've done the vegetation, I think the scene's starting to take a bit more shape. Go back up to assets, go to models and get out of nature. Small size, I'm going to select this SUV here, double click to place it in your model. If you click on the SUV, there's a number of options on the right we can change. Now I'm going to quickly go through and place some of the other assets that are built into D5 such as outdoor furniture. On the balcony at the top here, some internal set dressing such as picture frames, lights, furniture and things like that and then maybe a bike or some pot plants down on the ground plane. So now we've gone ahead and added in all of the elements, the scene is starting to come alive and getting to a point in which I'd start setting the scene, camera angle, lighting, sun and environmental factors like that. What I like to do first is to set up a render scene. What this does is save all of the settings in this particular scene including the environment and camera settings and all of the other settings into one place so that we can quickly come back to it and change different scenes as we like. So the way in which you go about creating a new scene is you go up to the scene list, click create new, we'll give it a name and now what you can do is start to set the camera. I personally like to set the camera using the orbit. Once you're happy with a view is save it to your render scene by clicking on the update scene and that will save those settings to the render scene. If you've gone ahead and moved somewhere else and you'd like to quickly jump back to that scene, simply click on the render scene and it will take you back there with all of the settings. Now it's time to go through and set the environment settings such as sun. In D5, there's two ways you can deal with the sunlight. The first way in which you can set the sun in D5 is by using the geo and sky option. What this does is set the model at a particular longitude and latitude in the world, set the time and day of month, and then what that will do is set a physical sun in the scene, which is simulating the real world sun. The second option is the HDRI. This uses a HDRI sky, as well as having the option to use a custom sun as well. Now in this tutorial, we're gonna use the HDRI. So what I like to do is go through and select a sun. I want a bit of cloud, so I'm going to select midday two. And then what you can do is use the image at the top here to rotate that to get the clouds and the lighting direction in the direction that you want. And you can see if we turn off the sun here, the image is sometimes a little bit dark from using an HDRI only. What I like to do is turn on the sun, go through and set all of the settings to your liking, as well as getting the shadows in the right location for you. Then we can go ahead to the effects window and start to set some of the other settings such as exposure, contrast, highlight, shadows, slope, white balance, tint, bloom, etc. There's a lot of settings here. You're welcome to screenshot this image and use some of these settings to help you setting up your scene. Once you've gone through and set all these settings, it's important to note what you want to do is click the update scene to save it to your scene. This is in case you accidentally move away and change some of the settings here. You can quickly go back to them later. So now I'm just going to show you a quick hidden feature in D5, which is another way to set the environment and effects features using presets. If you look in your D5 render window and go up to the top and click on this little purple rainbow colored studio icon, you can see that in the D5 studio space under the D5 curated tab, there's a whole set of preset environment effects. When I have a look through here, you can see there's all these different render scenes which have their preset environment effects in them. So if you have a look through the library and find one that you like, just click on it to download, double click, and that will apply to your set. So if you click make new scene, and then just hit the update scene on that, that will save the settings to the render scene. So as you can see in this environmental effect exterior day, it's brought in a HDRI sky, but you can see the shadows coming from a direction that I don't think works well for the render. So what you can do is just pop over to the environment effects under the HDRI skylight tab and change the rotation. Now this is a great way to go through and set specific environment effects yourself quickly with literally two clicks of your mouse, rather than having to go through and manually set all the settings. Now here I'm going to show you how to use a great AI feature built into the D5 renderer. If you go up to the top here, you can click on the AI atmosphere match. What this does is you can provide a reference image or a render to D5 and D5's inbuilt AI will use this image to generate a set of effects and settings to match the general atmosphere of that render. So what you can do is upload a reference image. So say for example, we wanted to do a nighttime scene. What we do is go on the internet and find an image of a nighttime render, which we wanted to copy, submit that into the renderer, click snap current view, and then click start 
start generating. That will do is generate all of the effects and settings the D5 needs to apply to kind of match that render. Hit apply. So you can see we've gone for a moody and nighttime render with some kind of themed lighting. Now you can see that's done a good job of matching the provided render, but there's no light. So I'm just going to quickly show you what this would look like if you did in fact have lights. So you can see that the render scene created by D5 just by providing one single reference image is really good. This is a really quick way of generating atmospheric renders without having to individually go through and set all of the settings each time. It's also a great way of maintaining a consistent atmosphere to all of your renders by using the AI atmosphere match for all of your different scenes. I really recommend you check out this feature and start to implement it into your workflows. You can see here we've started to set up an image which I think is about ready to export. And this is the final step in the process. You want to export your actual render. Go into the top right, click on image, and then you can start to set up your export settings. I'd like to keep this as an image. I'm going to leave the focal length and horizontal FOV as they are. I'm happy with the way the image is set up. We're going to set the aspect ratio probably to either 16 to 9 or 4 to 3 to get a more kind of typical render view. And I'm going to set the preset size to 2K. Now this feature is absolutely mandatory in any good quality rendering software and D5 delivers. You want to be able to export the different channels in your render. This is going to help greatly with post-processing. We've got a great range here such as Sky Mask, AO, Material ID, Reflection, Transparent and Z-Depth. If I'm going to be doing any kind of serious post-production renders, which sometimes to be honest I don't need to do because D5 produces such a good render out of the box. But if you did want to touch it up a little bit or deal with any of the particular lighting elements later, I'd recommend clicking that option. And now if you're just doing a single render, you can just click render. If you're going to be exporting multiple scenes at once, you can just hit the add to render queue, go through and repeat this process with all of your different scenes then go up to the top right click on the render queue and then just select the images that you'd like to render out at once and then just hit the render button find the speeds on d5 to be super quick and the quality is amazing so what i'll do is hit go now and then we'll see what, how they come out later another great feature of d5 is the ability to export a really high quality animation now if I wanted to go and make an animation in this scene, what I would do is instead of clicking on image, I would click on video. Now we're in the video workspace. So if you want to create a new clip, just go down to the bottom left and click create clip. And the way that I would go about setting up a new video or animation is by clicking the add current view. I would adjust the view into the location and settings that I like. So I might adjust the camera slightly. But once you've set that how you're happy with, click add current view. And then you might go through and set a few different scenes to be rendered it out into videos. Let's say you weren't familiar with what type of views you wanted and you didn't really have time to set all the settings up individually. If you just click create new clip, you can see in the top right here where we have a template under the video options, there's a whole series of pre-built templates for videos which are provided with D5 render. If you're not sure what they are, you can just hover your mouse over it and it's really helpful. It'll show you a little preview of what that will be. So let's go ahead and add a few of these options into our video. And if you just click play to preview, you can see that it's doing the slide animation for us. And that's literally been done with one click. So that's actually sliding to the left. I'd prefer it to slide to the right. So what I'll do is select this template. And then on the right hand side, you can see in the settings, there's a whole set of things that you can change. So you can change the direction, you can change the distance and even the projection mode. If you go back to template, you can add a few more. There's a whole heap of really helpful options here, such as horizontal pull and push. Uh, if we play that, you can see that you might do a slide and then you might pull back or pull into the shot. And these just give you some really good quick presets for creating animated views. And one of the benefits of doing these videos or animated scenes is that you can see while we preview the shot, the trees will blow in the wind and the animated assets that are provided in D5, such as this little dog here, will actually move in the scene and just create a sense of realism. Once you're done setting Setting up your scenes the way to export is just to head down into the bottom right of the window change the resolution i'll probably leave it on 1080p leave the format and the frame rate of 30 fps is perfect you can go ahead and render that out or you can add it to your render queue so now that we're finished rendering and exporting out all of our different assets, it's time to start closing out the video. I have to say it's been such a great video. It's one of the longest tutorials that I've done and I hope you found it just as helpful. Throughout the process, I've spent a lot of time really getting into the nitty gritty of D5 and I can honestly say it's one of the best rendering engines I've used. The stuff you can create in D5 even using the free plan is honestly amazing. If you're a student, I highly recommend you start using this because all of the inbuilt features, especially the AI features, make creating really high quality renders really easy and really quick and as you can see by final renders the quality is really high and the amount of time spent taking them is really not heaps so in wrapping it up i've really been enjoying using the d5 render i hope you guys have enjoyed watching the video and i'd love to do more videos on d5 if that's something that you'd like feel free to jump down in the comments below and let me know what other aspects you'd like to see so thanks for watching i appreciate it and 
I'd love to hear your feedback or any comments or requests for future videos down below. I make sure to reply. And if you have any issues with anything architecture design work related, especially if you're a uni student, flick me an email. I reply to all of them at this point, so, and I'd love to hear from you. So thanks again.